Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, it's Thais here. And for today's video, I decided to talk a little bit about my experience having a tonsillectomy surgery. To me, the surgery meant a lot and I'm so glad that I did it because I had so many issues growing up with sore throats and strep throat and all that kind of thing. That when I was finally able to do this surgery and when my doctor actually recommended it to me, I was actually pretty happy and excited. I also decided to make this video because when I was going into it and when I knew that I was going to do, do the surgery eventually, I came on YouTube and I looked up and I saw other people doing this kind of video and what their experience was like So I wanted to also give in my two cents and tell you guys how it went for me So let me give you guys a little bit of background about me and why I was even excited to do the surgery So that you can understand where I'm coming from a little bit better It started as far as I can remember anyway when I was about four years old and I used to have a sore throat or a step throat a lot um, back then it was only about twice a year and I felt like it had to do with the change of weather because it was almost always when it was changing from summer to autumn or from winter to spring I would always get sick and my throat would be affected as I grew older it didn't really get any better so back then when I was four when I was little my mom took me to the doctor and asked is there anything that we can do to help the situation and I guess the doctor told her at the time that only twice a year wasn't really enough for me to go through surgery and that we should have seen if it really Really developed into something more in the future or if I kept having them more often that then that would be a good reason to have surgery and like I said it didn't get any better throughout the years especially in my when I was 22 23 I'm 24 now and I did the surgery last year in September so I was still 23 that's when I was really having it a lot I had it about four times um, by the middle of the year so it was almost the end of summer and I had already had sore throat or step throat four times. Now I know those aren't the same thing, but what I'm saying is that I used to have either one or the other one of those times. So I pretty much, I talked to my parents, I explained what was happening. They knew I had to be going to the doctor a lot for all of these situations. So they were aware and they took me to the doctor. We were already thinking that I was going to have surgery. I was already set on it. And I was pretty excited because I'm the type of person that hates to be sick and not being able to do things. So I was really just happy to kind of get this problem out of my life. So that's kind of why I did the surgery and why it took me so long to do it. I know it's a surgery that's pretty popular among really young ones. My sister, for example, she went through when she was about five years old. And not gonna lie, I did have some reservations. I thought that maybe for adults it would hurt more or that the recovery period would be longer. And that was all from things that I had heard, maybe myths, but my experience ended up being very positive. So I'm gonna tell you guys some of my general tips and what to have by you at all times, what it was like during the day of the surgery. And then I do also have some notes that I'll be reading off of for a day-to-day -day update. Throughout my recovery, I was taking notes and I was just kind of following it very closely just to notice any little differences in how I was feeling better and also just because I was curious myself to find out when I was going to recover and how long it was going to take me. So let's start off with the day of the surgery. My surgery was at 7 a.m. and I remember there were some instructions I had to follow from my doctor. For example, not eat anything within a certain amount of time before the surgery and I also started taking my antibiotics about three days before for the surgery. So what I can remember from that very early morning that I was there is that I was pretty excited and I remember that right before it I was just talking to the nurses and then going into it was pretty quick. I was put under a general anesthesia and I don't remember anything after that until I finally woke up again which was about 30-40 minutes which was super quick and I don't remember anything significant happening just that I was brought back to my room where my mom was at waiting for me and I remember being transferred from from the surgery bed back to the bed that was in the room. I remember I was also very sleepy and then I remember after some time I felt a little bit nauseous. Luckily that was when a nurse was coming into my room to just check on me and I told her that and she just said well you're lying, I was lying on my back and she basically just told me to lie on my side instead. So that's a tip for you if you do feel nauseous that day or a few days after the surgery, try that out because that really worked well for me and I didn't feel nauseous after I did that. Now, some things to have by you, I would say is water. Have as much as you can when you can. Also have some chapstick by you. I remember I got one that was a cocoa butter one when I was also getting my meds at the pharmacy and that was really helpful for me also. Two of my favorite foods that I ate during the recovery 
recovery time was jello and ice cream and I was eating those as much as I could when I could. And then the last thing to have is somebody to help you. As I said before, I was pretty positive about the surgery and I was completely fine going into it, but I would say that having my mom there to help me made such a big difference. And I was so thankful that she could take the time to just really take care of me during that recovery time because, and I'll go over day to day um, in a little bit, but I felt really sleepy during the first couple of days especially. So that means that if I was by myself, maybe I would have not prepared soup or other foods for me to eat because I was so sleepy and tired. And we all know that you should be getting sleep and you should be resting as much as you can, but you should also be eating and keep hydrating yourself. Now, let me walk you through my day-to-day -day during the recovery time. So day one was a Monday, it was back in September. Like I mentioned a little bit before, I was very sleepy that day. I did feel some pain, but it wasn't anything crazy. I felt a little bit nauseous, like I mentioned, but the nurse helped me out with that and just gave me the tip to lie on my side instead of lying on my back. And and then I also remember from that day that I couldn't talk much. Not because of anything specific, but just because I didn't want to force this area too much. Now for day two, I felt okay, mostly, and I was willing to try more foods that day also, but I still couldn't talk very much, which is why it was so helpful to have my mom there because she could understand what I wanted and when I wanted food without me having to say much to her. Now for day three, there was less pain in the morning. Oh, and I remember in the morning was usually where I would really feel a little bit of pain, at least more than throughout the day. Because as you're sleeping through the night, you're not really hydrating this area, you're not really drinking water, except for when I would wake up to take my meds. But what I mean is that it's a longer period of time where you're not drinking water, not eating anything. So this area can get really dry, which consequently when you wake up in the morning, you kind of feel a little more pain. That day, it was also better to eat, and I could talk a little more, and I was able to eat a little more that day. And for what I was eating, like I said, I was eating jello, ice cream, but those were not the only two things on my diet during the recovery. My mom made me some vegetable soups and some pasta as well that didn't have a lot of spices, not a lot of salt or anything that could irritate my throat, which of course I would wait for it to chill a little bit and then I would be able to eat it. But of course I missed all the foods that I like. I missed pizza, I missed all the good stuff. But the good thing is that it was only for a few days and then I was able to eat those things again. For day four, there was less pain in the morning again. It was better to eat. I could talk a little bit more, but I was still sleepy in the morning. Now, part of why I feel like I was so sleepy was because of my pain medication. I was told by one of the nurses, I believe, that the pain medication was very strong. And I'll go over how, for how many days I took the pain medication, the anti-inflammatory, and the antibiotics in the end. For day five, I woke up with a little bit of pain, but throughout the day, there was barely any. Again, I felt sleepy in the morning, but I could talk pretty much normally at this point. And at night, I eat pretty normally but food still at room temperature. So for day six, there was barely any pain, pretty normal throughout the day, first day done with the pain medication and the anti-inflammatory medication. So by day six, I was relying only on my antibiotics. For day seven, there was barely any pain, it was a chill day and it was a Sunday, that's all I have for this day. For day eight, I barely felt any pain, I was able to eat pretty well, had energy to go out and do more things. So I guess this was the first day where I could go do groceries with my mom, where I did, I did go out of the house, but it was for a pretty simple thing. Day nine was my checkup with my doctor since the surgery. I went in just for him to check and make sure that things were going well and that I was healing well. And I remember I was completely fine. The only time I really felt pain was when I had to open my mouth. So when I had to yawn or anything like that. And of course, for the doctor to check, I had to open my mouth so that he could see. And I remember that being pretty painful but again, nothing that I couldn't handle, nothing crazy. For days 10, 11, and 12, it was pretty chill, not really that many updates, nothing really changed. It was, you know, not that much pain anymore. I wasn't feeling too sleepy. I was able to do things. Now for day 13, that was the day where there was no pain, um, just still a little bit when yawning. Like I said, if I had to open my mouth wide, 
then it was kind of painful. Also, some directions that I received from my doctor before the surgery were to not share any drinks or food with people, also not lay under the sun for too long, so no tanning, no going to the beach, obviously, but he said, you know, since I lived in a sunny place, it was fine for me to walk out the door, go to the grocery store, whatever, just not spend extended periods of time under the sun. And then no gym or strong physical exercise during recovery time. So that's the end of my day-to-day. -day. Now, I did take antibiotics for 10 days total, and like I said, it was three days before the surgery and then the seven remaining days after surgery during recovery. And then for my other medication I was taking, I was taking the anti-inflammatory, and pain medication for the first five days from the day of the surgery. So after five days, I was only on antibiotics and then seven days after the surgery, there was no medication. And I was relying only on my own to recover and I was pretty much fine. So like I said, it didn't take me long to recover and to feel normal and healthy again. Some of the things I had heard from other people were that they had gotten ear infections, for example, or that they really just felt a lot of pain. So I was kind of you know, skeptical going into it, but like I said, I was mostly positive and excited to finally be able to do the surgery. And hopefully from what I told you guys today, from what I shared about my experience, you can tell that it really wasn't painful or scary, at least for me, in my experience. It's been about four months now since the surgery, and I've only gotten sick with a cold one time, and it only lasted for two days. So the good thing is that before, when I'd get a cold or the flu or anything like that, it would kind of go to my throat and I'd get a sore throat right after that. So I was sick for even longer, but now that I don't have my tonsils, I don't really have that issue. My doctor did say that it was still possible for me to have a sore throat, but it wouldn't be as painful or for such a long amount of time as it used to be before. And whenever I did have sore throats or strep throat, it was very painful and I think that the surgery wasn't, and the recovery wasn't even as painful as the sore throats I used to get. So I'm gonna conclude this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it and the information in it. If you are somebody who is going to be doing the surgery or who's thinking about having the surgery done, I hope that you have a very positive experience like I did and I hope that you do recover quickly. Please consider subscribing to my channel. I would be very glad to have you as a subscriber. I make videos currently every day about personal and professional success and intentional living. If you like this video, please consider hitting the like button below and also leave me a comment on if you have had this surgery before what it was like for you and if you have any tips or if you are about to have the surgery in the future leave any questions that you have below and I'll be sure to answer those thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on my next video